Sholem Aleikum, Assalamu Alaikum, Shalom Aleichem. Welcome to Release Day Part 1. I regret to inform everyone that Donna Newman is still sick. Let us all hope for a speedy recovery concerning her well-being and her health. Now, before I start, let me say that I can officially confirm that during the Notre Dame de Paris fire, which took place on April 15th, this year, 2019, there was indeed a fire also at the al Asqa Mosque, but the damage is superficial, and Notre Dame suffered much worse. All of this is very sad, and I would like to remind all of our fellow Jewry that when it comes to Catholics versus Protestants en masse, we don't take the side of the Protestants, we take the side of the Catholics. And of course, when it comes to Catholics versus Eastern Orthodox Christians and Oriental Orthodox Christians en masse, we take the side of the Eastern and Oriental Orthodox Christians over that of the Catholics en masse. And when it comes to the Eastern and Oriental Orthodox Christians versus the Muslims en masse, we of course take the side of the Muslims. That is our position. Now I turn you to the video footage from Dr. Abraham Weisfeld. This was on April 8th this year, 2019. Okay, I'm going live now because the sun is setting and we may not have enough light, you know, to uh, show you what's going on. Just an important political event happening now because uh, Gadir, the eighth prisoner who was taken with us, uh, with myself, uh, is being released now from the uh, prison just up the hill there. There's the watchtower, there's the prison entrance over there with the tent over the entranceway. Now all of the people here are waiting for Gadir to be released. The man over there with the gray hair, he is uh, Gadir's um, husband. Uh, he was in prison with us as well. So uh, everybody is, you know, uh, getting well organized here. And we're waiting for Gadir to be released. <clears throat> She's been released uh, after, uh, since we were in uh, custody detention from Tuesday, 12.30 until Wednesday at about 3 o'clock. And uh, now uh, Gadir has been uh, detained. Here's, this is her first arrest. And she's been under detention now since Tuesday, which makes it uh, six days. A very petite woman who was enraged that her husband was being uh, beaten by a soldier. And so now she's being charged with uh, some sort of offense, supposedly because she bit a soldier. Whereas the soldiers, of course, they don't get charged with anything unless we proceed as I intend to do with a civil suit against the military in the Israel court. And in addition, I intend to proceed with a legal action against the state of Israel in a Jewish court, Sahandrin court in Canada, to denounce the state of Israel in the name of the Jewish people. Here we go, yes. Balbina uh, Mandel, hi. Abdul Karim, hi. Please share the video. We're going to show the liberation of Gadir right now. She's going to be coming out of the prison soon. We're a bit early. Everybody's coming here. This is, you know, there's no sort of, you know, like place to receive prisoners who are being liberated. You know, there's the highway here right next to the prison, you know, and everybody's supposed to just park on the side of the highway, climb up a hill here, out of the ravine from the other highway over there where the other cars are parked, and this is where we're supposed to wait. Oh, here's some barbed wire just to add to the scene. Okay. Pour les Québécois, écoute. Ce qui est arrivé ici, c'est il y a une autre Palestinienne qui sera libérée maintenant ici. Nous en attendons pour notre camarade avec qui on était uh, détenu uh, le mardi passé. Avec moi aussi. Moi, j'étais détenu pendant le jour et la nuit. Mais Gadir, une petite femme, 
a été détenu plus longtemps parce qu'il était fâché avec un soldat euh, depuis que des autres soldats avaient fait battre sa, son mari. Alors, euh, il prenait revanche sur elle et euh, son mari, ici, il a été libéré avec nous autres, le 7, mais, euh, et moi et euh, des autres prisonniers, ex-prisonniers là-bas. Et on a été libérés si vite parce qu'il y a un avocat privé qui est venu, malheureusement, parce qu'il prend, des, il prend des, des, des milliers de chacals pour avoir nous fait un peu de travail. Alors, on attend ici encore. Oui, c'est ça. On a été libérés sans accusation par la police. On a été détenus en première instance par le militaire qui était légal, mais quand même, il fait n'importe quoi, sur un terrain qui était secteur C après l'Oslo. Et c'est ça le secteur proche de la colonie de Maal Ephraim qui est proposé d'être annexé par le candidat dans l'élection d'Israël qui sera tenue demain, Netanyahu, qui propose de faire l'annexation de toutes les, les colonies avec leur prolongation aussi, les prolongations légales. Illégal, illégal. Alors, nous, on a été arrêtés sur un terrain qui n'était pas annexé encore, mais qui est considéré comme Israël quand même. Alors, c'est tout euh, arbitraire ici. C'est le militaire qui gouverne et il n'y a pas de loi euh, d'Israël qui s'applique. Il n'y a pas de loi de Palestine qui s'applique, même à les Palestiniens, après le militaire. Et certainement, il n'y a pas de loi internationale qui s'applique. Alors, on a été kidnappés, pas arrêtés, mais détenus, pris en otage. Et le frais de libération, c'était soi-disant 5 000 shekels. OK, en anglais. So, uh, we were taken by the military on Sector C, which is supposedly governed by Israel, the sovereignty of Israel, with their sovereign military force at Shahal. Except that, consider this, you know, the uh, candidate, you know, to be the Prime Minister again, Netanyahu, the other day, you know, proposed that the uh, settlements and the outposts, uh, which are doubly illegal, um, would be annexed as a campaign promise, as the Golan Heights, you know, was recently annexed by Israel and confirmed by the United States of America, but not by anybody else. Oh, perhaps uh, a couple of uh, semi-fascist European countries. So, land on which we were arrested, next to the settlement of Mael uh, Ephraim, has not been annexed because it is being proposed for annexation. Okay, so get the logic here. So, how could we have been detained for having infringed upon this private property when, in fact, it is not private property, it's just, you know, squatted? Okay. So that's what the military will have to answer to, because uh, I intend to take the military to Israel court and sue them for damages, for a criminal abduction, in effect. Now, in addition, being a Jewish Canadian, I am intending to charge the State of Israel with uh, a violation of um, my rights as a Jewish uh, person in a Jewish court in Canada, in a Jewish court which is called Sahadrin, Internal Jewish Community Court, governed by rabbis most likely. And uh, we'll see what's going to happen there. You know, I'm not going to let this be ignored because Israel cannot get away with this and will not get away with all of this. Okay, who else is here? Fella. Hi, Fella. Ah. Mahur Ali. Hi. Welcome. Walen al-Salam. 
Teresa Lynn, grazie, welcome. We're waiting for uh, Gabir to be released now from prison after six days in detention for nothing. As we were kept in a detention military base for a day and a night, you know, without without sight, without food, without hands even tied together, without a blanket until very late, without sleep, and for food, okay, the story of the food that day, okay. At about um, four o'clock in the afternoon, you know, um, I asked for uh, some food, okay. Some soldier brings me over, you know, like, like a portion of a slice of American bread and a, a and that was it, you know, to which I made the comment, ah, oh, American bread, that must be the problem. And then uh, later on, asking for some food again, got a slice of rye bread, yes, Jewish rye bread, just a slice, and even got a cold glass of water, even though we were starting to get uh, really chilled, you know, because it was nighttime. Nighttime it gets cold here, even though daytime is starting to warm up in the spring here. I'm so busy these days, and I should have already done this, but I need a new microphone because I'm not sure how the quality is going to turn out, and this, this microphone is getting weaker and harder to pick up the sound properly. It picks up way too much static. Anyway, Already being written into the manifesto is that we Bundists recognize Nateria Karta International as the leaders of our generation. We hope that the base dean, that is Beit Dean in Hebrew, uh, Sanhedrin, that Dr. Abraham Weisfeld will be going to, that's Jewish court, will have Rabbi Dovid Feldman present. As not only is Rabbi Dovid Feldman Nateria Karta, he is somebody that's actually relatively acquainted with Dr. Abraham Weisfeld. It is good to understand somebody that might be more familiar with the case, and I would hope that Dr. Abram Weisfeld would make clear that you, Dr. Weisfeld, did go and you saw the Chief Rabbi of Jerusalem. You did see Rabbi Hirsch's son, who is now the current Rabbi. Let's keep the connections going. I think that this is very important that our rabbis know that we recognize them. So anyway, I make this strong suggestion as the cleric, Chairman, because I think you've got the right idea. I think you usually do have the right idea, but I, 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 I put forward certain suggestions from the clerical position, just as I take in what you say from the academic position. I think that that needs to be made mandatory. If anything was ever, God forbid, if anything was ever to happen to Dr. Weisfeld and somebody was to fill his shoes, I think that part of the requirement to being the chairman should be that one should be an academic. And I'm going to push for that in the manifesto. I don't know how Donna Newman will take that, but she'll probably be on board with that idea. So, you've heard testimony from our comrade, the doctor, the academic, and our beloved chairman, Abraham Weisfeld. And you are about to hear even further information right now. <laughs> Much later on, like around 11 o'clock, I finally got a soldier who agreed to provide me with a chocolate sandwich, a Nutella sandwich, with two slices of rye bread. <laughs> to which I actually said the uh, the Jewish prayer to, you know, which is uh, uh, And after that, all the soldiers say Amen. <laughs> you know, like because like they were obligated, and because uh, they started to uh, realize that they were caught in a little sort of you know mental trap there because they had arrested a Jewish guy for being in what they call the land of Israel, you know, so where's the contradiction? In their heads, and good for that. Unfortunately, I was released too soon. I would have preferred to stay and fight, but a private lawyer came along and actually got us out the next day, to which he now wants to charge us some thousands of shekels 
which is the penalty for having a, a little bit of freedom here. Anyways, the military will not uh, be able to get away with this, and they have not gotten away with this. You know, already we have had a victory. You know, seven of us have been released. And today, Gadir is going to be released as well. So, we're doing well. That makes uh, seven victories, and an eighth victory about to come down. The familiarity, the camaraderie, the solidarity here is so evident and so strong. Some didn't. These are Palestinian workers coming back from a day of work, probably inside 48 Palestine, what's called Israel. There's 110,000 uh, Palestinian uh, workers with a permit who go to work in inside Israel for lesser wages, of course. 110,000 with a permit, another 60,000 cross over without a permit. And yet, you know, they claim they have to build, you know, a security wall, it's called, the wall of apartheid. Israel's apartheid. Not Israeli apartheid, because the Israelis are not in agreement with all this. Maybe uh, Netanyahu and his party, Likud, are going to get, um, you know, 26% of the vote. And a few other, you know, small uh, far right parties will get uh, a few percentages of the vote, you know, probably 6% or 7% for a couple of others to make a coalition government. But the rest of the Israeli public, you know, uh, can't take this anymore, you know, because all this, you know, uh, the settlements, you know, are eating up all the money, and the military is eating up all the money, and their children are, are being eaten up by the military for three years and two years for the women at a time when they should be in university. So, uh, you know, it's destroying the Israelis' lives as well, you know, this whole occupation trip and the Zionist, you know, nation state thing, which is a throwback to 1648 and, and the German the Treaty of Westphalia. An obsolete option which Europe has abandoned because uh, they just ended up slaughtering its, each other for for a couple of centuries, and yet Israel wants to replicate that whole constitutional format and paradigm. Okay, it'll fall, but not before we resist. Here we continue now. It's, the sun is set, night is falling, but we will continue to broadcast this liberation of Gadir, which is coming out of the prison soon. The eighth prisoner who was detained last Tuesday. Voila, voila, yes. This is the husband of Gadir. Uh, okay. Now. Okay. You want some more barbed wire? Here's some more barbed wire. Albina Mendel Yizrari, welcome. Abdul Karim Al Bab, welcome. Wahalam. Mariel, welcome. Mahmoud Ali. Raja. Okay, we are the welcoming party for Gadir, who's coming out of the prison there soon. Okay, so here you have a view of Palestine. We're in the uh, Sector C, Jordan Valley. Hills all around, of course. There's uh, some more hills. And uh, way back there is probably Jordan. We're so close.
uh, inside the road there is Tukaram, the village, to which we had to pass a checkpoint with uh, three nasty looking soldiers with their um, M16 uh, automatic rifles uh, pointed at us as we pass by, being stared at. And now we are here at the side of the prison where Gadir is still being uh, detained and from which he will be liberated soon. More Palestinian workers descending here going back home. So they have to uh, get up like uh, three, four o'clock in the morning in order to make it, you know, to work on the other side of the apartheid wall. It takes them about two hours to get to work, about two hours to get back. Unpaid travel time, of course, at their own cost. And then they have a few hours with their family. And then they have to go back in order to sustain their family because there's very little work in Palestine. Off in the distance there you can see the watchtower. In the front there the tent is the entranceway to the prison where the soldiers, you know, keep guard. And then there's some sort of, you know, uh, structure there. Which I can't make out what it is, but it goes right across the highway. Gadir, Gadir, we are waiting for you. Okay. Here's some uh, ravine, you know, with the olive trees. Olive trees everywhere. And the settlers, they try to uh, cut down or burn, you know, as many olive, olive trees as they can. They're into uh, a military strategy, I would say. You know, the settlements are a military outpost. They're not really uh, uh, civilian settlers. They are a military outpost on the private lands of the Palestinian villages in which they are encroaching upon in order to acquire more and more Palestinian land. Oh, here comes a military jeep. Oh, no, it's some sort of, you know, military transport. And then the uh, most fascistic elements in each settlement, you know, they uh, organize themselves into uh, clubs. They go into, you know, um, uh, training. I've seen them and I've recorded them on uh, my uh, the videos that I've taken, which are on my video channel on YouTube. They do training in, in which they practice going into uh, a building and shooting it up and uh, practicing, practicing as if they were going to do another Nakba from 1948 to chase out the Palestinians once more. I think that I should end this part by mentioning that Dr. Abram Weisfeld live streamed this all on Facebook. We will be back with release date part two. And until then, as a Sephardi, that is to say, Jewish al Andalusian, I say to you, Palestina, libre, libre, ma'asalama.